I'm I'll... trying to I'm trying to just roll with the the tech issues we're happy, having, you know? I'm just I'm owning it. We're doing it. We're going in. <laughs> okay. We'll get I don't know. I don't think you want me to call you Isin Blowy. Really? Really? You'd prefer Okay. Well, that's what we're going with, folks. Please Make sure Eason knows that you all approve of that name. Let's get into it, though. We actually have a witch doctor ban out. Last time it was ROTK's Donxia that was banned out, so LGD can grab that if they want. Yeah, it's, I mean, there was a reason it was first round banned last game by Secret. This is one of RTK's most comfortable heroes, and having your captain on a super comfortable hero also, uh, not exactly, you can't make that argument in this lineup, but RTK is a very skilled player. I wouldn't say he's like their shining star hero or anything, but he's excellent. So, yeah. But guess what? Secret has Invoker again. Weeha... I mean, he got some early kills, which really helped him out, but also he performed excellently last game. Disruptor! Team Secrets turn to pick. Yeah. Imba Spirit. And actually, kind of something, well... Kind of something different from last game, but then very kind of standard for these teams. We've talked about it. LGD love being very team fight oriented. I think a lot of that ROTK's influence. And uh, Envy loves Eternal. Uh, <laughs> Envy, Envy loves Ember, Ember Spirit. There we go. Words. So that's what we're going to be seeing come out here. It's interesting to see one side, like Team Secret has completely showed their cause pretty much here. Yeah. And I think even if something like a Bane came out next, you know, LGD can try to pick the next three heroes to be all Ember Spirit counters. There will be weaknesses elsewhere. And Team Secret is a lineup that can try to deal with that some. But we will be seeing Night Stalker banned again. I am not surprised by that because we know about some of LGD's drafting habits, but it's a bit interesting here. And I... For LGD, do you think they want to get rid of some more kind of uh, support heroes? Because last time they did actually ban out. Well, I mean, obviously you want to be banning out support heroes because that's and off lanes because that's what's left. But do you actually target misery at all? It's really... I don't know whether we'll see a bat band out here that's a hero misery likes. Yeah, it's going to be the nature's prophet from last game. LGD deciding that caused a lot of trouble. And it's a similar idea here, right? You, if you use your vacuum wall combo and you don't get enough out of it, nature's prophet can pick away elsewhere, knowing that you don't have the teamfight potential to take him on. I am kind of trying to figure out what secret could potential. I mean, they themselves love picking up the Venge, of course, banned out. They didn't want that on LGD, and they don't have the first pick out of the next phase. They're actually also big Dazzle pickers this patch, and they are hugely favoring the Tusk, despite some of the nerfs that have come out. So I wouldn't be surprised, but it's something where it's still pretty dang wide open. 
for Whoa. Definitely. Do you think? Morphling. Yeah, LTD. Yeah, now that the Morphling's here, it makes a lot of sense. And LTD, actually, Sila is one of the few players I've talked about it that Morphling doesn't have the greatest of wear rates. Um, on other teams, Sila, Sila does great on the hero. <laughs> Everybody else, he actually uh, seems to go the shotgun build very frequently. I think it's generally Lincoln's shotgun, uh, sorry, Ethblade, Butterfly, maybe something else, sometimes a Manta, maybe, you know, just getting full shotgun. But now they're starting to pick up some lockdown for him in the Shadow Shaman, and also just a nice way to push. Would you want it to be mag offlane, or would you want actually, because they could also run an invoker offlane, they have 2-1-2 potential, but that makes your gank lane business weak. As you said, it's yeah, yeah. It, it it can be rough. You need something to get rid of the ion shell, or you can sometimes get an early kill on the doxy. He's not the tankiest of heroes, you know. He's he's pretty good, but he's not the tankiest. And again, if they do what they did last time with the help of that level one sun strike, they might be able to bring him down if he overextends. But we'll have to see. Lena going to be what LGD? I'm assuming this is a core Lena. It actually could be support. It's a bit. It's not too greedy as a support, but I think it'll be core cool for maybe. Oh. Yeah, we both say oh there as this one pops out. It's um, it's actually not as uncommon as we, you know, acted all surprised. And it's a great counter to Morphling. It's actually something we've seen a lot, I feel. As a more counter, but it he, he's not as great it feels in the offlane as he once was. Obviously, with some scorched earth changes. So. Team secrets turn to bear. Yeah. I think as well, something that's really nice about Doom right now, obviously, he if the supports rotate on LGD, we do see this happen sometimes, right? Morphling, the supports will zone the Doom, Morphling will have a great time farming the free in lane as the supports go and do their thing. Doom can actually smack it in really well with this Infernal Blade. It's such a great harass tool that if the supports are gone for too long, Doom can potentially come back up there and be a real pain. Bounty hunter. Team secrets turn to Oh. Okay, so interesting factoid here. Uh, Team Secret ran all this lineup pretty much with Pylai Dai as their last pick on the Bounty Hunter. But LDD have snatched that away. So kind of an I mean, I think to me this bounty hunter reads a little bit as we really don't want Invoker to have the great start he did last game. 
We're going to make sure there's someone who can put pressure there. And if he can't, you know, because a sentry comes out in mid lane or Bounty loses, the sentry wars there, you go and harass Envy with the Ion Shell Doxia um, combo. Yep, the classic super annoying combination. Very strong. And it's going to just. So this is the defensive hero, I guess. This is another hero that obviously Secret feel very comfortable on. You know, we've all seen Pilot play Bane up the wazoo. Either way, folks, let's get to it. Players just have to pick their heroes for us, and we'll be ready to go. Do, do. Um, looking at these two lineups, I have to say, I think Secrets is a little bit easier to execute, right? You have... Obviously good team fight potential. Envy's gonna need some space to farm, but if you're having trouble you can start you can group up a few of you, push down towers with Shadow Shaman and the threat of invoker spells versus LGD need the bounty hunter to do work early. Darksy is gonna need to get up quite a few items before team fighting it does feel. What are your thoughts, ESN? Um kind kind of true, I guess, but So oh, it's kind of uh, hard for Secret to get stuff. Done because of the threat of this bounty hunter. So you just, we, like, Secret have to really careful of where this bounty hunter's uh, movements are and stuff like that. And if they're always so cautious where he's going around, they suffer on the supports because they have to constantly keep track of where he's going. Yeah, it's not the easiest of games that way, but we've seen it before where a bounty hunter doesn't get a lot done, you know, maybe isn't, spends too much time looking for a courier snipe, actually can't secure any kills, and his harassment doesn't end up hurting the farm on secret. You're not getting level 6 until like 14 minutes in sometimes, and then your hero is pretty much useless. And fighting 4v5 into secret with the changes to Doom, I think is a bit of a hard ask. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that uh, MOI will get stuff done though, this guy is a god. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if he just makes it a, super difficult for Secret in the, in the laning phase. Do you personally admire any of these players, right, Eosin? I know you have played in some high-level tournaments yourself, I don't know if you have ever met a lot of these folks, but... I am gonna get flamed so hard for that comment. Just made. <laughs> what? But I, I, don't, oh, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I like. A, I like player Dota players in general. I mean, I respect every player a lot. I think every player has a lot to learn. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't say I have anyone I admire. Just one. I admire all Dota players. So we'll just keep it at that. Okay. Coolio. So Misery is actually going to help out with the block here, as is DDC. So both sides going to start out with some pretty nice blocking. So this mid lane, who do you favor? I think Lena has a lot easier time. Yeah, Lena is one of the best in winning heroes for sure. She and just uh, wins in every aspect. I feel. I do also feel like Invoker, you know, when he was a bit stronger earlier on in this patch, before he got hit by the Nerf Hammer over and over, he was, he act, I think he tried lost hit there with the Sunstrike? Is that how desperate this lane is? It's not that desperate, it's just, you, you have nothing better to do anyways. You're gonna slowly regenerate your mana, and all this kind of stuff, so you might as well just throw it out there, I guess. This is something I'm not used to seeing. Misery has actually come in, he'd already managed to get himself the Centaur Creep, he's taking a lot of heavy damage, but... Normally it's the support, especially the Bane, who pops into mid, since you can harass so well with Brain Sap. Yeah, I mean, the... Bane, Bane in lane is super annoying. I'm kind of surprised about this Misery play, but... I mean, he's not getting anything done, he's just harassing the mid lane, so... Just uh, helping yeah. out Weeha, since he is kind of struggling against this. But they should... Oh! Bounty Hunter, actually, where is the other sentry? It is on Disruptor, so they will actually end up losing the Ward Wars in mid. But this just means it's time to go work on Misery. As a Bounty Hunter, you have trouble in one lane, you go elsewhere. And he just keeps walking around. He forces people to not get anything. He'll keep himself down, but at the same time he keeps other people down, so the trade-off is fine. He just needs to 
find find space later on. I'm sure his team will give it to him later on. And yeah. he's just zapping EXP from his he got EXP from that devourer too. Yeah, I mean he's having a good old time as the bounty hunter while ROTK again feeling like it's a little bit safer to jungle to get that level two. And as you said, MMY making life really rough for misery. Although in the mid lane we're gonna have a shackle onto maybe and the sun strike auto attacks will make that our first blood coming out. They all trying to walk in onto misery. The Janata has come out, he's slowed taking heavy damage, and he goes down as well. So, a little too slow on LGD, but still a good return kill. Yeah, that's a, that's a... That was a really good kill for LGD. I think it's perfectly fine for LGD giving up first blood, because they had to rotate so many supports. Like, they had to rotate both supports in, and they're just making space for the rest of the team. It's, per it's perfectly it fine. Yeah, and Envy is the one who I think you have a little bit harder time against a Doxia. You don't, on that Ember Spirit, have a super easy way to burst down the Ion Shell versus the Morphling can just play back a little bit. Uh, you know, has tiny amounts of range. Yeah, it's it's going to be... I don't think they can do it. They, they can't do anything against uh, Morphling. Whereas em, uh, Envy's uh, Ember is... Much more vulnerable, I guess. I don't know if they're gonna do anything to it though either. They're, they, if Secret prioritize Envy's Ember, I don't think there's any way he's gonna die. Supports are always gonna be next stuff like that. So, LGD just have to shut down the other two lanes instead. Yeah, I think, as you said, just try to sh win two out of three lanes, and you generally win the game. And certainly, when you have Alina in mid, although she did get first blooded there, she is still way ahead of the Invoker on the S. You do expect this, of course, because she has Dragon Slave and so on, and much better damage. But you know, a death and she's ahead of him by 10 CS. Oh yeah, Alina's lane laning is just super annoying to deal with. Oh, we are gonna get Janata there. He actually goes in for the meatball drop on the maybe walking out of it, and the auto attacks will have it. Fairy fire or no, but maybe probably given her life for this being burned down, salving away, auto attack stops it. And she get a denied it creeps here, but instead a nightmare comes out and looking like she's gonna be going down. She does manage to go for the dragon slave, but the brain sap gets the last hit, so. Well, I think, um,. I think LGD's goal is just to shut down Weeha so whatever he did last game doesn't happen again. I'm sure it's going to happen again, but just not as soon. They don't want him to spiral out of control so early. So, trading Alina should be, they should be okay with this for now. Yeah, it does feel, obviously getting the kill on the Invoker, uh, somewhat helpful, but Invoker actually having some kill involvement there himself. Actually, he's actually above her in net worth. I'm a little surprised. Oh, okay. We have us back on top onto Misery. He's going to take some damage, but with a TP rotation in, not sure if to stick around with forms out. Leaving DDC in a bad spot. MMY is coming in, though. Can they get this kill onto Misery? Yes, they can. And now Pylai die. He's going to have to wander away. And while all of that's happening, Invoker and maybe again, exchange heads. Okay, maybe maybe going down one more auto attack. She does end up burning. Weehaw. That was a really well placed uh, meteor. It's the way that kill would have worked. So. He. Liberal isn't exactly the word I want to say. I guess good is just it, but he has landed a number of fantastic meteors. There aren't a lot of players who throw that out so readily. Yeah. He's definitely a very talented invoker. Sure. I'm kind of surprised. Um, I'm kind of surprised Misery died top there. I thought I thought he was gonna make it. He's super. He's still super tanky. Even though Scorched Earth isn't as good as it was before, it's still really strong. So I'm kind of surprised he died there. I think a, a lot tank. of it, a lot of it's showing the presence of this bounty hunter, right? You mentioned MM1 as a god, but also he's getting a lot of work done. He's constantly in the right place, and there was another example. Misery is trying to escape. Trying to make sure that he survives the gank and surprise there was a bounty hunter behind it the whole time. Yeah, he's doing he's doing fine right now. I mean, if you look at uh well, actually wait. The supports are getting severely outleveled. On on uh, on LGD. 
They're behind oh, yeah. their supports, but at the same time, Doom is the same level as their supports, so yeah. that's a trade-off. When we take a look at the experience graph, it's pretty even. And a lot of that, as you said, is ROTK massively not leveling Misery. He's two levels ahead of Misery. And also, he's the same level as the Ember. Now, Misery going to take some Janata. Again, there is going to be, oh, a dust coming out. Uh, do they have a way to stop Highlight Die? And TP is coming in. This is looking like a fight that LGD cannot take. Nightmare up on Scylla. He's level 7. I don't know where his Replicant is. I don't see it out. And instead, he's going to fall to a Meeple. He manages to wave. Ball. Goes for the TP. Is this going to be the escape? Deafening Blast stops him from getting out there. Really well-played rotation from Secret again. I think that was definitely a little ambitious of a dive from LGD. I'm kind of, kind of, I would say insane to not expect people to TP when you dive past their tier one. So I think that was a misplay on their part. Mm, I'm not sure how far back he's gonna. But yeah, also RT uses his wall vacuum combo on MV on bottom. Another, you can say, ambitious play, but in that case, at least, I'm not sure if in the next minute you're going to find a good opportunity to use Wall Vacuum. So anything to put pressure on Envy's farm might be the right choice here. Yeah, I think it's it's fine. Um, like you said, you're not going you're not going to use the wall for anything really at the at the time. Just he doesn't even have levels for vacuum yet, so it's, just, it's fine. He's just pressuring Envy right now. So we will be seeing Doom getting up the tranquils he's now getting a little bit more space you know gonna try to rock creep. but on the other hand Arote has gotten a lot of farm here and so he will certainly be getting onto his mech faster than last game yeah i mean like i said there's not much they can do about killing off darks here it's really difficult he would have to be really out of position and get caught by raw stuff for that to happen but He's almost level 6, it's really good for him. They can start taking objectives oh, with his wards. Lena gets blown up again in the mid lane! Faster than she can blink, just another media into cold, oh, cold snap into media. This is... not how this lane is meant to go, to say the least. Mm, yeah, I, w I would say that too. But his... his uh, meteor is just too good. He doesn't even need to set up, he just seems to hit it all the time. Apparently my mic is having issues again, but it I is. honestly have no idea what's happening. I think you just have to move it a bit below your mouth, it's also popping a little bit. We did actually do testing before this, guys, and didn't have this issue, and then I, you were cutting a little, so I asked you to uh, lower your threshold. Maybe just put it back up and occasionally speak louder, but I think really the only thing is you're going to have to have the mic like below your chin, because I think it's catching when you breathe on it a little, so. Is it? I mean, yeah. it's, it's been below my, okay, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll try to. Lower, apparently, that's why I was calling you a mouth breather. You got some, you got some breathiness. Going on there. I mean, uh, again, I moved it even further down. I hope yeah. it's a little better. We'll hope so. And yeah, folks, uh, you know, it's it's early days. We'll we'll try to make sure it's all fixed up by the end of the night. Either way, looking around, Bounty Hunter approaching that level six. Ember Spirit, though, when we take a look, his farm is great. And honestly, yes, Ember needs a lot of farm to come online. But something that. I don't know, so does a Morphling, right? Morphling's gonna go a Lincoln's before he gets a damage item. Ember's probably gonna pick up uh, bots and then maybe work on his Battle Fury here. He does already have an Aquila, so I don't know if he wants to also put drums. Um, I think getting drums would set him back too far. Uh, I think he just goes for the Battle Fury after this, or after his Boots of Travel. Yeah, I mean... Okay, not to, not to say that the hero is boring or anything, but there's kind of not so many different builds with an Ember. And when you know that he is a hero, he goes usually Battle Fury, depending on how the game's, you know, bots, Battle Fury, depending on how the game's going, it's going to be a good uh, a Blink or the, the Chrysalis next. You know? He mm -hmm. really likes being a Blink Ember Spirit. He's very skilled with heroes, makes a lot of value out of it. But there's a Static Storm right on his head. They're going to glimpse him back into it. Also Kinetic Field. Laguna Blade to finish him off. Just as we were talking about how good of a player he is, I don't think there's a way to dodge that type of business, though. Yeah, I, I don't think there's much you can do against that. Uh, it's gonna. Ha I think it's it was it's gonna happen eventually. Unfortunately, 
Why is he gonna get caught out here? Yeah, yeah Bane's grip going out. That I mean, this again, no much you can do there. Is this a bit? RPK actually a big hook. He's just bombing up while to pull in trouble. Actually gonna get him up there. Didn't have time to get off. Okay, there's gonna be a sun strike. Not sure this is still enough damage with the changes to enough. doom. So yeah. RTK gonna be fine there. A really nice play. This kinetic field. He's super tanky. I don't think there's any way they're gonna kill him. Well, that was um, really good for LGD. Look at they... this wheel! Are you saying about LGD? Uh, they need to get MOI his level six now. It's about time, and then they need to start fighting together. I think I think they're about ready to start fighting together now. Now's a, now's a good time. They have all the tools they need. A couple of levels of vacuum, a mech, and then and then they have track. So they're all rotating Ooh. to the jungle together now. Highlight die gonna be taking a bit of damage, but this just sets up for the sun strike on the other side of the fight. Misery gonna get glimpsed backwards. He is tanky, but not enough for all of these auto attacks. Wards are dropped by Puppy though. If he can hold anyone here like MMY, Laguna Blade comes out on him, but it's not enough. And now Lena goes down instead. MMY is invisible. Static Storm again dropped on Envy, but there's no follow up damage. And oh gosh, the baby Doomlings are about. They are stunning people up. Ember Spirit is in there. He does get the Searing Chains off onto Scylla. Four for one. That was really unfortunate for LGD. I think they should. They, I think. I think they rushed it a little bit. Um, I feel like they should have waited for Bounty Hunter to get his level six. He didn't have it that fight. They had to kill one hero before he hit six, and at that time, it's a little too late for the tracks to start coming up. I. It also just felt like Secret were very ready for that. They had a kind of power peak, I want to say, right? Shadow Shaman being level 8 means that you have max Aethershock and mass Serpent Wards at the ready. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, that was a, that was a sick combo off that sleep. They timed all their nukes together <laughs> so that ROTK didn't even have a chance to do it. They, they uh, nightmare them and they waited for the Sun Strike and then right when the Sun Strike hit, stab and Fork... They even called Fork Lightning and Aethershock. So... Almost like I don't know, 800, 800 damage coming out off one nightmare. Yeah, it's uh, as you said, pretty dang good stuff there. So, puppy gonna be getting very rich off the back of that. And you know what happens when a shadow showman gets rich? I'm actually kind of wondering if he... okay, puppy didn't see it because it's nighttime. Um, I'm a little bit wondering if puppy might run for a Midas like they did last game, or whether he'll just rush Link. Um, it would depend on how they feel uh, their their current game is going. I suppose, like if they're ahead, you just buy Blink, or maybe or maybe something else. I, I don't I don't know how Puppy likes to itemize. Okay, we have the converging onto Pilot Eye, but they missed the stun. Maybe uncharacteristically uh, spells there. Now Puppy coming out. He does have the mass over boards at the ready, but the Doom has already been used on DDC. Maybe he needs to hit a good life striker. He does manage to get it off. Misery taking damage here. They also love the disruptive Ori stack. Stolen out. Ember Spirit walking in a baby life strike. He's gonna hit, but maybe he has to walk through those wards and the last auto attack from um, Weeha. Gonna get it. LGD really having some trouble here. Yeah, I, one of the biggest problems with their lineup right now is that there's no. There's no stuns. Like, there's actually nothing. The only Ooh. thing they can rely on is vacuum and a glimpse. Like, if they don't have glimpse, there's no setup. And it's kind of difficult to rely on vacuum kinetic field right now. It's not high enough level vacuums and that kind of stuff. So Secret just, like, they just split up and then just pick everyone apart. They're not in, they're not in oh. threat of anyone. They didn't use the track on Weehaw, but they drop a sentry. Glimpse into a static storm. He uses the Yule, buying quite a bit of time here. With so many heroes around, can he get a return kill? No, instead, they get the big old bounty, putting it on Morphling. But yeah, like, like I was saying, there's no lockdown, so Secret are just kiting them around. Tylar had a lot of trouble trying to hit anyone, and pretty much all in on this Darkseer, Darkseer um, disruptor for the time being. Yeah. They're gonna have and to I... wait for. They're gonna have to wait for maybe to get his jewels. Really pick people apart. And as we saw there, Envy's timing on the 
bots faster than average. He's also the highest GPM this patch coming into this uh, LAN. So we're gonna be... Okay, MB's just low because he's farming, but it does look like what a fiend's grip onto Syla. And uh, everybody looking to back on out. Pylai die with a nice nightmare there. Can they catch him? Kinetic field not gonna latch. So LGD forced to back on out. Ember was a uh, low bottom, by the way, because maybe yeah. just trying to solo. Ah, uh, I wasn't sure if he was jungling. Maybe went for the attempt because he had. Even I mean, even if you don't get that kill, one you forced him back. That's farming time. But two, your Laguna Blade's such a low cooldown. I think yeah, on Alina, it's, it's always worth, worth it. it. Yeah. Attempt. Almost had it. Almost, but no cigar. Now LGD is the game here, right? Got. Uh, tying, you know, you obviously want the 2-0, but tying's not bad either. So, especially against one of the ugly stronger teams in your group. These groups are both stacked, actually. Everybody in this qualifier is fantastic. Or in this LAN is fantastic. Oh yeah, for sure. So, um... But, um, well, we, we uh, got his, you know, core tools it needs to... Oh, speaking of core tools, our OTK end up being a nice vacuum wall combo. There wall traps right on his head. Sila coming in to see if he can help out here at all. They're gonna be a glimpse back into a static storm. Still not enough damage. They need to burn someone down. Waveform, this puts Sila in a hover position. He's doomed up. Laguna Blade comes out. He's actually morphing strength while doomed. Is that what I'm seeing right there? No, he wasn't. He is just trying to survive. He's gonna get denied. No! We all manages to get the lost hit and on the disruptor and now Maybe Nightmare uh, Bounty Hunter's looking for a kill. He almost gets two. If he can catch up Misery here, sure can. He does have the one charges. Doesn't end up going for it. So I'm gonna get the fight recap up because I know a lot of those were track kills. Oh goodness, MMY. He has one charges. He can definitely do this. He can go for a shuriken. You want MMY? You have one charges shuriken, and then oh, and will it be enough? Not quite looking like it. I think he'd need two owns. He just goes for the TP away. Invoker, not able to get anything off. There was a, there was actually no way he was gonna get that kill, but it's still funny to see him just try it and then. Get... I think one Ooh. of the biggest problems with that team fight was they they had to react more quickly. I, I don't think they should have gone for it because it's so difficult to reach ROTK in such a terrible position but uh, they decided to go because he and then backup showed up too late disruptor couldn't kinetic field in time luckily they still picked off ee but that was definitely in the uh, secret's favor yeah mic down again eosin it was good for a bit and then I, I think you moved it back up a little but I also want to point out, Lena, I'm assuming that's going to be an Aether lens on her. We didn't actually really see too much of it in the last game. Um, obviously, this game is very close. Secret doesn't have, too, you know, they had a bit of a lead. That team fight, it looks like, did end up going back the way of LGD. That's what happens when you have a bounty hunter. Really nice series chains from these there, stopping all aggression. Yeah, um, Aether, Aether lens is super good on Lena. Even even with the nerf, it's, it's still such a good item. You have to get because it. it increases your Yule's range, gives your Laguna cast further. You can stun from further. Like it just everything about it, is too good. Yeah, I think obviously there have been some changes to item the recipe, not giving you magic damage resistance. But I think especially on these heroes like the Zeus, like the Lena, where you cause so much, like pretty much. All of your damage output is magical until quite late into the game. I think it's just too good, as you said, to pass up. Yeah, the the range and just everything about it is just too good. For... So we will be seeing M M Y saving up. Obviously, Doxia is going the Guardian or is going to go the Guardian Greaves eventually this game. I think R O T K saving up for a blink first. They need that initiation, but even if they go in, R O T K may just jump into death because they actually have. Quite a bit of instant lockdown on secret. Yeah, they well, they. I feel like they need. This is going to be one of those games where they really need sheep sticks and all that kind of stuff. But obviously, that's for a much later game. But mm -hmm. now that now that Lena has Yules, should be okay. Late, late, they're gonna. Yeah, we're. Gonna see a TPR, RK getting very close to that blink. It's a game for this 
has actually been significantly more impact. Still feel like these two teams being very careful about how they play around each other. Yeah, uh, neither side wants to give up objectives or anything of the sort. Every time they take team fights, they're usually in where one team can't really get anything out of it. Yeah, I mean, they're doing... Uh, okay, so you talk about this positioning, actually, oh. we're maybe gonna have MMY walk up into them. They didn't have any here. They're grouped up. Are they, they thinking... Like, what's going on? The smoke is actually now gonna be real. I think Tucker Curry does have a misery. They're trying to blow them up. But do not have an MMY taking heavy casualties. We are is stuck in the kinetic field. Static Storm, Light Striker Ray will stun him. No spells coming out of that, man. But now the Doom on the maybe he has dropped his toolkit. The mech not gonna help out enough in misery. The RODK he's trying to run. He goes down. Another four for one. Yeah, and once again, this is this is what I'm talking about. Like LGD just don't have lockdown in these team fights. They're so reliant on the vacuum disruptor combo, and if they don't hit more than, I would say more than two people, it's gonna be close to impossible for, impossible from the win fight. Team Secret just have so much damage coming. Everything really. I mean, what? Oh, you can itemize about it, right? You can eventually get up sheep sticks on people, yules, get that type of thing, but that's really costly. They're gonna have to try to stay in this game until pretty late, like lost game. And, uh, well, the problem with that too is if it takes them too long, it doesn't even do anything because the other team can just itemize in preparation for it. Mm -hmm. You just prepare for prepare for it by buying you know, Lotus Orbs and Lincolns and all that kind of stuff. So even yeah. if they end up getting Sheep Sticks, it might not even do all that much. That there exists the Lotus Orb, a 4,000 gold item that counters the Sheep Stick, a 5,000 gold item. Albeit, the way Lotus Orb works in the meta is you often only manage to get it on your supports, but it can still be rather devastating, as you said. It's something that's totally feasible for a team to have up, and speaking of feasible, MMY staying alive, not so good here. Uh, not the old zone great, and he goes down. Oh, and maybe they're gonna catch up. Maybe puppy setting up for the sun strike is slightly off the mic mark because of cooldowns, and maybe will wander away. Replicant made of misery. Three blads, yo. Yeah. Uh, LG, I feel like I feel like secret are strong enough now where they just are taking these. Ones and then they prepare for Roshan. They're in a really good position right now. They just have to make sure they don't give LGD Roshan. Now, this did happen last game, though. It felt like Secret was dominant for the first 20, 25 minutes. What is going on with Pylai Dai? Uh, just helping them destroy the tower. There will be a Yules. It looks like Secret might not actually... Okay, they are just going to completely sacrifice him. Moving away. Not thinking that this is a good setup for an engagement. I think he was just making sure that LGD weren't trying anything sneaky. Yeah. He loses his life is uh, kind of whatever, I feel. They just yeah. absolutely can't, like, like I said, they can't give LGD, that would be their get back into the game. As long as, yeah, as long as they don't give it away, then they're... It's Pylai Dai, right? It's, it's the guy that you kill, and then you go, wow, I think we actually lost gold getting that kill. <laughs> Tactical feeding. Yeah. Pilot Day is an expert in it, so... Now, Guardian... Okay, as I say that, I was gonna say a ROTK close to Guardian Greaves, but instead he's close to death, Sunstrike also coming out, he will be able to get off the wall! But it is not enough, even though he mechs the... Sorry, the vacuum there. It was actually a pretty nice vacuum, but... Slide... Searing Fist coming up MV, so... Oh. I'm not... I'm not sure if this is an... I think they can take tier one bottom with this kill. Having ROT out of the... The game for four seconds is real good. So, so they're going for the smoke. Probably gonna wrap around their tier one. Oh, they're just going they're... straight for Roshan. Okay. Yeah, I, I think this is a great pick as well. They can drop wards for it, you know. You can still push the tower even without the wards, and they know ROTK dead for the count. They should be able to get this before he respawns. He also has to TP. So. And this just allows MV to play so much more ballsily. RTK yeah. bought back. They want to fight this. Yeah, but they're going to be way too late. The dust comes out. He actually plays and gets a little vacuum out. Who is going to get the Aegis? And Volga gets it. They also got the kill. A nice static storm is set up. They blow up Misery. Can they get any sort of follow-up? RTK goes down, but, you know, it's a dieback on the guy who explended everything. And LGD... 
that wasn't ideal. That was definitely not ideal. They really wanted to contest it, but they weren't ready for it at the same time. They tried to kind of rushed it a little bit. And then RLT had to die, die back for that. Didn't get anything out of it. They just get a do. Looking grim for LGD right now. I... So we said this last game. I, I just really want to focus on this because I do feel like we said last game it's grim for LGD. I think there are some differences because they they have a morphling and not a... I'm sorry, way to say this. Morphling is going the shotgun build, which can be helpful in team fights, right? There are certainly people he can try to blow up and change around a team fight, but I don't think Secret is going to make the mistake of letting Scylla get solo pickoffs here because they know it's the shotgun Morphling. Yeah, they'll definitely try their best to avoid dying that. I, I don't. I don't think. I mean, they have no reason to that to happen. Any They're so far ahead. They just farm uh, whatever they have control of and just avoid running at all. Yeah. Also, ways of catching out Scylla are starting to come out. Even though he has a Lincoln's Pylai die, has that Aether lens up. Also, going to start working on a Glimmer Cape. Speaking of catching people out, they just blow up maybe Weeha again. Big Invoker already has the blink in the ags. You might have been the Invoker. Huge. He always gets huge. You can Probably should have that look back there, Doctor. Only. To slow him down for so long. I, they didn't even slow him down at all. They killed him once and then he just killed maybe three times in the end. Uh, something like that. Now he's just doing what he did last game again. I'm kind of surprised they didn't ban Invoker this game. I feel like Weha's Invoker gave him the most trouble last game. Oh my goodness. This Shadow Shaman also already has an Atos. Okay, Silent, is he just going to walk into all of them immediately waveforming away? So they do also end up getting the bottom tower. How how does Puppy already have an Atos? This is I mean I know they're almost ten thousand net worth ahead, but that is ridiculous. He has a lot of farm. I mean I feel I feel like Puppy always had a lot of farm mm -hmm. in uh in all of his games. Now I think, something... um, one of the biggest differences this game though is that last game L G D were kind of behind, right? Yeah. But they had a far superior to fight come lineup game. Not nearly as strong, so they're like in some serious trouble. They if this game continues like this, they're just gonna lose in ten minutes. I feel. Something else I want to point out that's really nice about the Atos. We often don't have an opportunity to talk about this, but the way that Cripple works, it actually has enemy accuracy forty percent thing, which you know that the Morphling's going to build a butterfly. If you know the Morphling's going to build a butterfly, but you maybe don't want Ember to be feeling forced into an MKB so early, Atos is kind of like a nice in-between with that 40% enemy accuracy. Uh, well, the thing, the thing about it, uh, Atos is like, it's not, it's not like an item you always, you know, so good, it's core, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It's really good here because they want a way to easily bring... Uh, Easily break Morphling's Lincolns, and having Atos is like one of the best ways because it's such a long cast range. Yeah, it gives it gives him all the stats he wants. You know, 350 health. You know, because Shadow Shaman doesn't have that many options for for uh, you know having health and stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. normally people just get Scepter if they want health. So having Atos is a like alternative for having uh, health, and then it also breaks the Lincolns. So. Oh, Ember Spirit, he actually tries to stop any potential blink out there, and it will mean a free tower coming out for Weeha. So, oh, okay, just making sure he's not tracked up. I mean... I I agree with you, I don't feel like LGD has as great a team fight here, although there is some, you know, they... If they can land the Vacuum into Static Storm, into Light Strike Array, but I think it's really rough against a team is experienced a secret. Where do you find a spot to choke point them into that? It's you. You just have to really hope that they mess up. It's really difficult. You know, if a uh, team, team secret realize that that's their only game losing, they, that's the only way they lose the game is if they all fall for that combo. So I don't think they're gonna let that happen. They just split up. 
don't get caught by that and eventually oh Sila gonna get caught out by puppy taking heavy damage fiend's grip as well looks like he's falling no chance to get away there and now puppy they expect wards for that but could this be what they need to go high ground i they have takes to go high ground Oh, Puppy gonna get damaged a little bit here. Immediately follows up with the dust and they get a kill on him. But MMY getting caught along with maybe. They will get out of the Sunstrike. MMY is still visible with that dust. The Surge away and the Guardian Greaves to bring him to safety. Doxia does have vacuum wall here, so this push has to be a little bit careful. Slide the steering chains almost brings them low. Misery coming in, dooms up ROGK. No worries now about the wall vacuum for the doom duration. This is some really nice play coming out of Seekert. Well, they just decide to back off. It's a buyback. They don't have to do anything, really. They and just guess go back those... and farm and wait. Yeah. The guess on the Sunstrike will be wrong, but Envy has up his Daedalus. Not sure how much it matters. And you need to move your mic below your mouth again, ESN. It's I haven't moved it anywhere. I know. You're, it's just, yeah, it's unfortunate. We, we've broken your mic from these great games. Great. So, Weehaw's just poking around invisible. I... Obviously, other teams can learn from this, you know? The teams have, I think, a short break in between. I'm pretty sure that the next team that's playing uh, Secret is probably going to watch this match. Oh, they're going in onto maybe. There's going to be a vacuum, but Weehaw shows that BKB. She actually ends up using her Yules to dodge a lot of it. And that should be the end of that. Sila thinking about coming in. Oh, they have a glimpse back onto Misery. Light Striker a hit as well. Will we see the shotgun? There it is. Also amping up that Laguna Blade because she does not have Aganim Scepter yet. Going to get himself out of the EMP. Can they catch anybody else? Weehaw's BKB is on cooldown here. He does, of course, have the blink at the ready. And it's looking like that should be the end of the engagement. That was a big glimpse pick off. They really needed that. Oh, well, they end up actually catching up. Puppy here, he's going to make glimpse back with the need to make sure he takes damage before he comes out of this duel. A static storm off the mark, but they'll get Puppy. And they might be able to siege a tower here, although they don't have creeps. I don't think there's much for objectives here uh, for LGD. I think the, the creep wave is all the way in front of their base right now. So, what they can do is just go back and push out their lane. I don't think there's much they can do at the moment. I'm kind of yeah. surprised they managed to win that fight though, even though RTK misses vacuum completely. They managed yeah. to uh, win that team fight. Um, also, kind of interesting to note is that, oh, okay, Rams by Weehaw. They are falling further and further behind on Secret. I think a lot of, as you mentioned, what kept LGD in the game last time was that they were able to bring the game back in their favor, they were able to keep the, goss the gold loss steady. There's not really any hope of it this game. Everybody's farming well. Envy is doing ridiculously well at 550 GPM. Yeah, well, the last game they were able to keep it together because of just strong... They were never in a position where they would lose a team fight. And Secret realized that, so they never fought them. This game is a little different. They're not as strong as a, t as a, as a five-man team fight. And if they take a fight and they lose a the team fight, it's probably just over because I don't think Silo has buyback, force a buyback on him earlier. He's still really under-farmed compared to Envy. Oh, I mean, it's going to take... I feel like it's going to take a miracle team fight from LG. Like, they absolutely have to hit more than two people in that vacuum combo. Also, with the BKBs coming out, it gets more difficult to pull off these big plays, obviously. Do you think it's also time for some of these supports on LGD? Obviously, Disruptor's going for the Aghanim Scepter. Super powerful on him to make the Static Storm great. Does Bounty need to invest in a Lotus Orb for Scylla? Um, I think Scylla should be okay for now. I don't think they need a Lotus Orb for him, because no one's going to have Sheepstick and stuff like that. They... I feel like if Silar doesn't mess up, which probably he won't, he's perfectly fine on his own with his BKB and Lincolns. And up next... Okay, we do have a lot of gold on some people around the map. Are you already at the stage for LGD that you're worried about saving buyback? Uh, yeah, LGD need to save 
Probably needed to start saving for buyback. Oh no, they have caught out the bounty hunter who has a freshly picked up gem. He is going to be blown up. They they bought that pretty recently, and of course it sets up nicely for Roshan as well. Very unfortunate for them, especially dying right next to the Roshan pit when Roshan is up. Roshan. It gives and... away a lot of control. Yeah. And you definitely have to start saving for buyback. Because that was probably the best, one of the best times to just go start going toward the high ground push. I feel like it's Secret again are in a spot where they have the world as their oyster. We said this last game, but here as well, their high ground defense is so great when you have a Battle Fury on the Ember Spirit. He can play extremely aggressively in this next team fight with Aegis and Link him up. You said it would take a miracle team fight for LG, but I think we're very firmly at the point in this game where it is Secret's game to lose. Pretty much. I feel like it's actually been like that for maybe even 10 minutes ago. Because it's like, like I said, once again, it's they just lack the team fight lockdowns. It's just far too reliant on the vacuum. And again, maybe it's feeling forced into that BKB instead of being able to pick up you know, some other lockdown. I don't think it's a wrong decision against an Invoker, but of course, you still have to deal with all of Ember Spirit's damage to protect, uh, protect So, good luck with that. Yeah. They... He's just dying far too quickly. And there's, there's way too many disables. He has to get to BKB. Because he picks up the BKB, he might not do enough damage to uh, carry the game right now. Okay, they're trying to find something on these supports in middle. They don't realize how close EE is. And Puppy also having a blink dagger means that catching anyone is difficult. There's going to be TPs coming in. Weeho has a blink. They need to get all the way out of here. But Puppy is starting out with the Atos right under a sentry there for MMY. Doesn't even matter. Gets blown up. That took Invoker what? Three hits? And yeah, he's pretty can. strong. ROTK takes a big hit of damage as well from MB. Looks like he got a crit over on him. He has Guardian Greaves though, so he was able to run away. But he's used it. them now. It means that they're not going to have them potentially for the support of this high ground push. Limits how aggressive their play can be. Although ROTK's only job here, as you said, he has to get a big wall vacuum. But with wards, you don't necessarily need your heroes on the high ground. Ward placed inside Fiend's grip onto ROTK. Sunstrike going to come out as well. The Glimmer Cape doesn't save you from that pure damage. And with the Doom, he is brought down. He does have buyback. This would be very costly, though. And he will end up using it. NB is standing inside of their base. Sila, not much he can do here. Does have the shotgun up and a BKB, but going into fight, there's so much physical damage here as well. Tornado gonna be off the mark. Puppy jumps in actually again, going on ROTK. They just wanna lock this guy down so he can't get up a wall vacuum now. Big EMP static storm is really nice, but they have BKBs to go through it. ROTK Guardian Greaves up is gonna have oh suddenly Envy right on top of him, and that's a dieback. Looking like this game is all but over. Envy burning one life. Lincoln's is popped on Sila. Can he get any sort of fight on Envy? I just imagine he'll remnant away. And as he does that. That they've gotten a free Rax. Well, they have the melee still, but that was a very costly hold. Having a buyback on Darkseer, having him die, die back, definitely not what you need. Yeah, they are 20,000 net worth behind now, obviously losing a Rax and, as you said, the diebacks being very costly. And yes, Envy lost his life, and when you could argue a bit deep, but he has the MKB. Wolfling no longer really wants to go for that butterfly. I think he might have to... Uh, it's tough to say what he has to buy next, actually. He needs so much. Yeah, you need a Scotty, you need... You know, you're feeling like maybe you need a Satanic or something ridiculous, but... You're a Morphling, you need damage, Laguna Blade does come out on Envy, I don't think they have the control, we talked about this, and Sila not able to get in range for the shotgun, and now they are caught out of position, there's gonna be a Fiend's grip out on Sila, he is forced to fight into uh, Weeha, taking more damage, is there a Doom with his name on it, it's on cooldown to Sila with the BKB, but Weeha again, bringing around Sunstrike coming out, that's pure damage, he is pushed forwards, Sila taking more damage, the auto attacks will have it, he does have buyback, but they lose the Disruptor, who doesn't, and maybe that mid Rax is ripe for the taking. That was some really uh, deep diving done by LGD. They're kind of desperate though. I feel like they kind of had to go for it. 
Otherwise, they're just waiting to lose. We have uh, refreshing for Sunstrike, it's kind of funny. I don't yeah, know if you hit double Sunstrike. I think it's the right move there because obviously killing the Morphling, forcing this buyback really retards its item progression. And now we're going to be seeing Sila caught out again. Lincoln being popped. He is going down, and I imagine the GG calls will follow shortly after. We'll see another Sun Strike, and there it is the GG call. Eternal Envy's Ember Spirit, too strong. What do you even ban now? <laughs> and you, you ban Ember, you ban an Invoker. I feel like it's such a difficult choice for LG. Yeah. Or for a team that makes sorry. Over. Totally agreed. It was... I mean, other teams going forwards will have to decide what they're comfortable playing against.